Okay, my friends, hold on to your hats. I am going to show you a bunch of, of pictures here. The ones I will show you that we did with our research are legitimate, real, actual pictures. The ones that you're going to see from CERN and so forth are going to be little, you know, diagrams. Artist rendition. Now, what do we want to look at? We want to look at entangled photons. And what are entangled photons? Well, they create particles that they call muons, and then they have electron showers. When they come through a new medium, we force them to come through a venturi, which crushed all the fields together and created enormous amounts of energy. So before we go on, I just want to be certain you understand, they're looking at huge particles. A neutron is 1,824 times bigger than the smallest particle I'm going to show you. And a proton is only one less. It's an odd number, 1823. That means it wants one more electron to become a neutron. Basically, that's all it is. Now, they're showing these two together. Well, that's fine. But what it really boils down to, this is light right there. And when you break light apart, which we did, you will have blue balls, and you will have red balls. What they're doing is they're smashing huge particles together. So they're not only getting these and the blue and the red, they're getting chunks of other things and oddball looking things and, you know, chunks and balls of all kinds of who knows what. Three, two red ones and one blue one. And we see this too. But we see it in, and as I'll show you exactly how we see it. But we, only, we can only see these particles here, which is light. And light is constructed of these two particles. That's it. Case closed. When you break the light apart, sometimes you can get like that. That's what's called a neutrino. And sometimes you'll get two blue ones and a, and a red one. Still a neutrino, but it's a different flavor. All right? Now, they're showing the same photons, a little bitty one here, and the same big, big one. Well, what does that mean? One of them is more powerful than the other one, that's all. And I can show you that, too, in green versus red. This is basically correct, except they don't understand. A proton consists of 1,823 of those two particles together, or the red and the green, or the red and the blue. That's what's called a gluon or an electron. Two of them together make a photon. Right? And there's 1,823 of them in a proton, 1,824 in a neutron. Okay, my friends, if you've got any geek at all in you, you have heard of entangled photons. What are entangled photons? Well, these are apparently the, the entangled photons. And they are entangled with this shower. And then you have these particles within this shower that are going to reattach. And they say, well, they can go all through the universe. And they're, they're entangled together. And they always want to find each other. They are partners. And they, they just want to come back together. And they want to use this somehow in quantum computing. And it, I can tell you right now, it's never going to work. I'll show you why. Okay, my friends, quantum entanglement is really nothing like they're thinking. They can do this from a long distance away. The particles separate, yes, but they immediately come back together. And not the same particle that separated from one particle comes back to that same particle. So I can't see how they can ever use this. Okay, all you have to do is assume that light cannot accelerate. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, light can accelerate, light can slow down. That's a normal speed of a pulsed red laser, which is nothing more than light. Everywhere you look, you just tell you the same thing. This is the particle that exists within there accelerating out of its wave. And it is a particle, I've shown it dozens and hundreds of times. All right, so here's the bottom line. Light it goes that speed normally. That is acceleration of the particle that's within there which creates the wave because it's a magnetic particle. And here's the same thing they found at CERN and Fermilab. These are not my pictures. These are from Fermilab. 
It's from Don Lincoln's point. It's just, what's the point? Look it up. It's an article by him. It says exactly what these particles are. And we see them in light. They're using protons, which are huge, gigantic balls of trash, literally. We're using the, what they want to get to is these particles. And that's all that exists is these two particles. And bigger and bigger and bigger globs of them make up different masses. All right? At this level right here, you're down to the smallest dipoles that exist. So you can break them from the white to the black. We can break that dipole apart. A dipole you normally cannot. A bar magnet, you could break it 10,000 times and you will end up with two bar magnets. It will always keep continuously have that bar magnet situation. We're at the place where you, there is no more bar magnet to go. <laughs> There's a black and a white is positive and negative. And what we did was we made them split. So now, yes, you can. I thought, no, it was impossible that you could get a positive away from a negative. But no, it's not. It's not impossible at all. And we did it by accelerating them and slamming them into a venturi, forcing the white to go through that tuned venturi. Only the white. The black has to go around. This it goes to entanglement. There's no such thing as entanglement the way they're talking about. They're never going to be able to do quantum computing the way they're thinking they're going to be able to do it. And the only way they can get them to entangle the way they're talking about is to put it at almost absolute zero. And that means you've removed every single extra electron in the mass because that's, heat is nothing more than electrons. You turn on your electrons, they heat up your stuff. That's what electrons are. You to make it colder and colder and colder, you have less and less extra electrons. So things can flow right through there. There's nothing to bump, bump into. I agree. And it makes superconductivity. That has nothing to do with entanglement. This is entanglement. And it's only entangled for like an instant. It breaks apart there, comes right back there. So it has nothing to do with what they're talking about. Einstein was right. It, it, it was wrong. It's, it's spooky, spooky something at a distance he called it spooky I don't know what at a distance but spooky matter at a distance it, it, it doesn't do it it's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way all right this right here is why what you're looking at there is a laser beam through a crystal well we're putting a laser beam through a venturi much better they're seeing this separation seeing these particles and seeing these showers we are seeing precisely the same thing only on steroids there's our particle the laser beam boom it goes through here and becomes disentangled so what do we have here we have the black ball particles surrounding the white shower these balls don't find the same white one they started out with in here they are attached together, but here they're separated. Now, these white ones are going to find any black one that they can find to attach to. All right, now, don't forget, they're just starting to get into laser and understanding these two particles exist. And it's still not understood, even by Fermilab. They, they, they have no clue about this. And they're the ones that are supposed to be doing this research. That is light accelerating, and that is the particle inside the photon of light. It accelerates. That's acceleration. It's such an explosion here that the pushback creates light. You would never see this light. The only reason you see this one is because it's accelerating that way. You see this one because they're being pushed back this way. Otherwise, light is just basically invisible to us. The only reason we see this is because of we're using CMOS first of all, which is is a is a all it does is picks up on luminosity. That's all. So we're using CMOS. So we're not interfering with anything. There's no observer effect here whatsoever. We're just picking up what's radiating off of this subatomic explosion, and that is that's as subatomic as you can get. Look over here. You see those waves, those reverse concussive waves? That's because of this literal explosion, literally a, 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 it's an atomic explosion. The black has left the white. It comes back together here instantly. But the same black that left the white one coming in here didn't find the same white one back here. So there's no, there's no quantum entanglement to the way they speak of it. 
Let's look at another instance. And here, this is this is Fermilab or CERN. I forget who put this out. Well, it's not mine. It shows the black ball and the white ball together, which is the electron neutrino. The white ball turns into a shower, a white shower. The black ball just stays the black ball. They know that. It's called a sterile muon, and that's what we have here. At the Venturi, the black ball's left, and they stay the same size. They never change size. They never get bigger, and they never get smaller. They are just, they're the concussive part, and they are bam, 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 hammering this white through that Venturi, and all you have is white hair. No black is allowed through because the Venturi is, is restrictive enough to keep the black out. It can't get through. And it squirts that white out of there like, like, well, you can see what it does. And then they come right back. Now, if you think that the black and the white one here that was attached and the black one jumps over there somehow and gets back to the white one that came through here, I, I can't imagine that. That's just not possible. So that rules for me. It rules out entanglement. They're saying these are entangled. Well, we just saw them come through there and the black will always saw us white. And then we saw the black ones come back into them. So what happened there? They're not really entangled. They're not going to come back to each other 100 miles away. And that's the kind of stuff they're talking about. They ran a 30-meter tube, and they had to cool it to absolute zero almost, as close as you can get, in order to conduct that, that distance. And the only reason that is is because heat is made out of these particles right here. Heat is made out of these particles. All right, the free ones floating around. They're actually like these two attached together. It's like that I showed you before, which is an electron. It's just a free-floating electron. When you turn on heat, that's all you're doing is floating in free electrons into the air. They attach to things, but they're, they're ex excessive energetic particles. That's why you heat things. And then they seep out to where they're most wanted and that's what heat flows in flows out it's just the way it works and what's flowing in and out is these particles right here those two little particles together they're electrons gluons whatever you want to call them there's always a dark side to an electron nobody ever knew that before and i've shown that absolutely without them nobody can deny that all right there it is right there that's a photon so you have the black and the white you got black and the white they're like bar magnets back to back and they have a field around them. And as that field goes through the air, with that particle going that way, it concusses. You probably can't see it in this, but maybe you can. You see the particles in front of it? That little one there is glowing big. The one at the top is not glowing big. Let me bring it down here so you can see. You see? That one there is not being concussed. The particle's going this way. This is blocking that. This one here is getting popped and it's, it's glowing and it's going to go whoop, and that one's going to go in the front. That's all it is. It's, it's a floppy little particle that charges and spins, charges and spins. That's what creates a spin. All right, so we just saw this accelerating. And the only reason we can even see this is because it is beginning to accelerate. This is just the original beginning of acceleration. All these gases in the air are concussing against this forward field. And so they glow a little bit. It's always push to shove. Every time you push something to shove it back, there will be radiation. Now, this sea moss can see this in every, every color range. Very, very... Well, here, here's, the, here's the red ones. We're coming in with a laser this way. You see this? Remember I showed you sometimes there was two blue ones and a red one, or one red one and two blue ones? There it is right there. That's exactly what they were showing before. And then it turns into this, which I showed you. They have that same particle. So we have this turning into this, then turning into whatever that is, a mess over here, and then it turns into the black and the white ball. And here they are right here again. Alright, there's here's how it comes through and that, that's the particle I just showed you coming through. And it changes its flavor of neutrino as it comes through and then it explodes. Now the neutrino is this these different little 
formations, like that's a neutrino, that's a different type of neutrino, these are pure photons. And the reason is you're going to have a photon which is at the right energy level for light. These are, are, are because they're accelerated and slowing down and so forth. So you're getting different energy values. That's why they say they change flavors, which is energy, energy values. And these are all the same particles they're seeing. But these are just gigantic globs of a mess. And when they hit them together, they just they create all that mess. This is what they're doing. They're slamming these together. Woof. We're not doing that. We, we're using this already. We're down to here. We do see this and this. Yes, absolutely. And I'm sure we could see some of these too. If we could dig around, we could see a two and a three here and there. Yes, absolutely. And we can see them in green. We can see them in red. We can see them in blue. Absolutely. All right, you saw the red with the particles. Here's the blue. I mean, uh, the green. And the blue is the same, only the blue is real hard to see. It's real, real fast. But the green is the same thing. And here is the neutrinos of the green. You see this has two whites and a black in the middle. This has two blacks and a white in the middle. It depends on what, how impacted it is at the time we snap the shot. Alright, and don't forget where is the other ones here. Here's the red. It's the same stuff. There's a neutrino value of the red. Here's the red. Red's not hard to see really compared to the green and the blue. The blue is virtually impossible. It's just too fast. See that? That's the blue right here. Let me get a good shot of the blue over. Alright, check this out. You, you can slow light down, you can speed light up. I showed you it's speeding up through atmosphere. So we're not in, even in a vacuum. In a vacuum, there's no restriction to it. In the atmosphere, there's a restriction and we're still speeding up. So this is slowing down. This is after it came through the Venturi and it's really hot. You can't tell there's, there's a back-to-back -back there. You can't see it. By the time you get out to here, you can just barely see it. But it's coming in. It's slow because it's in the atmosphere. It's colliding. But the blue is much, much, much more energetic than the, the green and the red. And, it, and I can turn on LEDs, which are nothing more than... Um, photodiodes. I can turn those on with blue, not with the red or the green, only the blue. In this particular type of a photodiode, it's, it's one of the ones that's used in an LED light. 